Well, certainly the housing sector took a bit of a hit this past year with the moves by the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates and, of course, the level of inflation in the economy. But what lies ahead for 2023? We ask that and more of uh, Susan Walker, who's a professor of real estate at the Wharton School. Susan, great to talk to you again. Pleasure to be here. Let me start out, I guess, with getting your thoughts on this past year, 2022, and how you view the real estate sector reacting to all of these impacts over the last several months. The real estate center and specifically housing has taken the brunt of the Federal Reserve's aggressive stance on monetary policy. It is the housing sector which is in recession and is uh, pulling down the rest of the economy as we speak. It is amazing, you know, the way that this year has gone when you see the weekly uh, mortgage uh, applications data that comes out, how much there has been a pullback this year. But then I guess you also have to remember how much of a surge there was a year ago, uh, which obviously led us to this point. Yes, uh, but it's not just a compensation. We are at historic lows in pending home sales, for example. Uh, we have a historic decline in, in pending home sales, the biggest decline uh, in history, actually. Uh, so that's not just a reaction to high sales, although sales were high for a bit. Uh, housing prices are now coming down. Now on that front, housing prices are, were increased again in historic range uh, over, this pa over the past preceding year. So a decline was in the cards no matter what. But it, the decline that we've seen over the last few months and yesterday's news, uh, which further the, the rate of decline, is, um, is, is pretty, it's a pretty sharp reversal of these price increases. We've never seen such a sharp reversal. Again, it's historic. But again, the um, interest rate, the mortgage rate rise is historic. Mortgage rates doubled from March to, uh, to where they are now. And it doesn't appear like that's going to change a whole lot. I mean, the expectation is that the Fed is going to slow raising rates here uh, over the next couple of cycles. But still, you're talking about uh, mortgage rates, or I should say interest rates, uh, that are double what they were uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, it, it almost feels like even if we see a little bit of a decline, it's a little bit like a new normal that we're talking about here. Well, I would certainly hope it's not a new normal. It is actually you know, the Fed's aggressive stance to get interest rates and inflation rate back to their goal of, of 2%. And once uh, inflation rates get back to 2%, which I think will happen, perhaps not in 2023, but once they achieve their goal, then uh, mortgage rates will happily decline once again to affordable levels. But between now and then, there's a big gulf, and it, the housing market for sure is doomed. We see that right ahead of us. It's a sinking ship. The other part to it is this the supply issue that is still out there, and that's obviously been something that has been there for a little while. And, and it, it also is something that it's not easy to correct, to be able to add in the level of housing you need uh, to kind of get us to where we, we need to be now. Yes, and that's why pending home sales are down so much because it's not just a demand factor, which is straight out of the affordability crisis we're in and the aggressive mortgage stance, more aggressive interest rate stance and mortgage rate increase, but it's also the lack of supply. And we see lack of supply in two fronts. One, construction, single family housing construction is down, uh, but that's short term. Long term, we have a structural deficit in housing supply. And so when we uh, hopefully recover out of the possible coming recession, that's still going to loom there. So that's why I do believe, unlike the previous uh, housing debacle, the 2007-2012 downturn, uh, where we saw housing prices fall uh, uh, 30%. So that was, we're not there. And I don't think we're going to get there either, because last time we had oversupply. This time we have supply shortages. We have supply shortages in new construction, but we also have supply shortages in inventory. And that inventory actually is still way under historic averages. So normally we see a six months for a demand supply imbalance, and we're still just somewhat over three months. That's what's keeping housing prices from plummeting. 
Is the inventory question to a degree exacerbated by the combination of the pandemic and uh, and, and also the supply chain issues, which have obviously impacted, and then also the labor as well. So it's almost uh, three pieces kind of coming together, which is has really hurt the uh, the supply part. Well, ironically, I would say it was none of the above. <laughs> ironically, it's actually in the Fed's inflation policy. So the inflation, as interest rates go up, as mortgage rates go up, uh, the owners of homes that with a three to four percent mortgage rate, they're not giving that up. So they're holding on to their homes. And they're not moving. So we see mobility at all time lows. We see people who are uh, perhaps would want to sell their homes to move to a smaller house, let's say. Nope, not happening because they face mortgage rates in the high 6% now, even though mortgage rates have fallen since the 7% highs of a few weeks ago, still 6.5% is double the rate they may have, 3 to 4%. So they're not moving, they're not selling. Uh, despite the fact that they could still get good prices. Prices are down 2% uh, over the last few months, and they are probably going to continue to fall as uh, because mortgage rates and affordability and because of the potential looming recession and at least a slowdown. What's really different this time is we have prices which are falling even before the recession. Now, that did happen in 2007 and 2012, but that was a housing-induced recession. That was because we had very risky mortgages. That's not the story here. In fact, what's the story here is it's the Fed using the housing market as a fulcrum to bring overall, to slow overall activity and get the inflation rate down. When they succeed in doing that, it looks like there is some success not enough to say game over, but some success, which, uh, and the good news is, again, it's housing and rents, which are likely to come down most and fastest, yeah. may get us out of the, infl uh, the inflation bubble sooner than we think in 2023. So where do you think the, the, the status of the rental market is at this point? Because there's been so much discussion about the impact of the pricing component in the rental market over the last year and a half and, and what impact it's having on the decision process uh, of a lot of either potential home buyers or people that maybe have decided that they don't want to be a homeowner anymore. Yes, well, don't want to be, can't be a homeowner at these at these prices. So first time, potential first time home buyers looking at these prices, not qualified, can't buy, going into the rental market. That has been the story. And indeed, the multifamily sector from a construction uh, perspective has been booming. We actually have uh, an oversupply of housing, on uh, multifamily housing construction starts have been very, very high there. That's good news because it's, we do have, again, a structural deficit of housing across the board, multifamily, single family. So what's happening right now is a combination of fears of a recession looming, lack of consumer confidence is causing households to pull back on lots of different fronts, including the housing decision. So people are not buying again, because it's not affordable, but they're not renting as much either. We see younger adults still staying home with their parents, they're still in the basement. And in fact, we see more of that. We see household formation decreasing. So the rental market is seeing actually supply coming on, and is seeing demand pulling back as you can't afford the rents either. Yeah. What had been happening in 2021, 2022 is folks were moving, not, not being able to buy, they were pushing up rents, they were moving to the rental market. But now that's not affordable either. So people are, what's the alternative? Uh, roommates, parents, those are the alternatives. And we see from the demand side and the supply side, rents slowing down. Again, housing market across the board in a doom situation for a bit, but not, and I don't, I, I want to emphasize this, we are not about to see a recurrence of the systemic crisis that we had in 2012. Home equity is sufficiently high so that even if prices fell, even 20%, that most people would be equity positive and would not be faced um, with foreclosure closure and banks would not be faced with the kind of financial disasters that they were faced last time and the doom loop of foreclosures and prices declining. That said, we have more to go in terms of house price decreases 
and rent decreases as well. The good news is that this is intentional and the intentions are working. So uh, we are likely to see because uh, it's already it's already incorporated into the new rent contracts that are being taken on today. We are likely to see six months from now a major decline in the housing rental equivalent component of CPI, and that will pull down overall inflation. Together with supply chain, the supply chain is being cured overall, expectations are coming down, all of that's happening. But just focusing on the uh, rent and the housing portion of the CPI, a year from now, that may come in 2023, November 2023, we may see that zero out. Since that is actually one third of the CPI, yeah. that could be very good news indeed for the overall CPI we see a year hence. So let me ask you final question and two parts to it then. As we're heading into 2023, I want to ask you about home buyers and homeowners, what they're each thinking. First, let me ask you about potential home buyers. What should they be thinking about going into the new year? Well, many are sidelined. They're sidelined because they can't afford it. And they're sidelined because they're seeing prices fall. So uh, I can't predict what they're thinking, but uh, if I were in their shoes, I would look to further price decline. So being on the sidelines is not a bad place to be from a home buyer perspective. And what about the homeowner side? On the homeowner side, you've got that low mortgage, an historic low mortgage. You're not going to see that again for at best a year or two. So hold on there too. 